The first verse of Genesis describes the beginning of the world as empty. After that, God continued to create plants and animals on earth, but he only made one pair of humans. How come? One of the most frequently asked questions is, did God create any other humans except Adam and Eve? For it appears that God created a large number of plants and animals, but just one man and one woman. Except for a little detail in Genesis, which could support the theory that there were other people on earth while Adam and Eve lived, it appeared as though Adam and Eve were the only humans on earth at first. Now, consider this, even though there is no indication in the Bible that there were other individuals alive during the early post-creational age except Adam, Eve, and their three sons, it is reasonable to believe that there were. One strategy utilized in biblical writing is withholding information and leaving it up to the reader to make meaning of it. We can go into any issue that regards to undertraining the scriptures by studying numerous potential signs. Not everyone is usually mentioned in the Bible, when there is a long list of people. For example, women were frequently excluded. Furthermore, when the ten generations from Adam to Noah are listed in Genesis 5, for example, just one individual from each generation is mentioned. Similarly, the women are left out of the account of Noah's progeny in chapter 10 of the Bible. Therefore, it is compatible with the Bible's overall literary style to name only Adam, Eve, and their three sons without addressing any other people who may have been alive at the time. This does not, however, imply that these people were non-existent. Neither Cain nor Abel nor Seth's wives are named. When did they begin operations? A Midrash scripture says that a female twin followed each guy. This would suggest that they were close to the sisters. This explanation is not included in the Bible text. This practice is at odds with the moral stance of the later Torah, which forbids a man from marrying his sister. One could argue that it makes more reasonable to assume that other people were present at the time. In a similar vein, the Torah states that Adam was 130 years old when Seth, his son, was born. What happened in the last 130 years? It's possible that he abstained from all sexual activity for all those years. It seems more plausible that he produced many male and female children during this time but the Bible does not specifically describe every occurrence in this way. Since Seth was one of Abraham's ancestors, he is listed. Cain admits to God in Genesis 4 verse 14 that he fears that I will be killed by whoever discovers me, perhaps in vengeance for Abel's murder. Whom is he afraid of? If we believe that the only people alive were him, his parents, and maybe his and Abel's wife, should we understand whoever to refer to them? Is it because he is not clear that he meant his family members? Is it reasonable that he fears his family? Isn't it more realistic to say that he was afraid of other people who didn't share his family at the time? In response to Cain's fear, God sent him a sign. If the family was all that existed, why would a sign be necessary, and the Bible suggests that God placed the sign there so that anyone who finds him would be compelled to kill him? These statements don't seem to fit the small family, does it? Genesis 4 verse 16 tells the story of Cain's departure and his stay in the land of Nod. If no other people lived at the period, why is there a kingdom of Nod? Verse 7 describes Cain founding a city and naming it after his son. In chapter 4, it is said that Abel raised sheep and Cain tilled the land. If the brother's family was the only one, why would they need to pursue these careers? For example, they would have no issue finding an animal if they were meat eaters. Unless he was farming sheep for someone else, Abel didn't need to do it himself. It is correct that God states in Genesis 1 verse 26, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and that man in these verses refers to a single individual. The Torah states in 2 verse 7, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. However, man can also be used to refer to humans as a plural. Furthermore, 
the Bible makes no mention of God creating any other humans. Yes, the Bible only gives Adam and Eve's ancestry later in chapter 5 and says nothing about other people's existence. That being said, this genealogy is not complete. It also focuses on Adam and Eve's descendants because they are the story's protagonists and Abraham's ancestors. These hypotheses generally suggest that there could be a larger population than the modest family of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel shortly after the creation. They had Seth when Adam was 130 years old. But the Bible makes no mention of God creating anyone other than Adam and Eve. All other humans were created by natural reproductive processes, with the exception of Jesus. Genesis 2 tells us that God created Eve from a rib taken from Adam and Adam from the dust of the earth. According to the New Testament, Adam was the first human, Romans 5 verses 12 to 14, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 22 to 24, verse 45 to 49, 1 Timothy 2 verse 13. Genesis 2 verse 7 states that after the Lord God created man out of dust and breathed life into his nostrils, the man came to be a living being. God had made the guy, and he was alive. Adam was the only one there. Eve was subsequently created by God using what he had already made in Adam. So the Lord God cast the man into a deep sleep, and while he slept, he took out one of his ribs and put flesh in its place. Genesis 2 verses 21 to 22 states that the Lord God created a woman from a man's ribcage and brought her to the man. Remember that in this case, God created only one woman. The Bible makes no mention of or provides evidence for the creation of any other people. All other humans in history descended from Adam and Eve. This begs a few questions, like, who did Cain have to fear after killing Abel? First of all, keep in mind that humans are a single race. It is true, nonetheless, that individuals of a given race or location have a range of distinct skin tones and other physical traits. It's possible that God endowed Adam and Eve with the genetic ability to bear children that differ in terms of skin tone and other physical traits. When God preserved Noah's family, their varied members might have had distinct physical traits or a variety of genetic options, Genesis 6-9. It is possible that individuals who spoke similar languages lived apart from each other until God gave the people of Babel different tongues, Genesis 11 verses 1-9, which led to their dispersal. As comparable individuals began to breed with one another, similar traits would have increased and became more obvious, eventually becoming characteristic of that area. There are plausible theories that explain how all races originated from the first two humans, even if we really don't know. There is no doubt that God, who also created the rest of the universe and all other life, created Adam and Eve. All other people can be considered their ancestors. Genesis 1 verse 27 states that God made every human in his image and with the idea that they would all relate to him in order to respect him. Thank you for watching.